Well, I think by nature, particularly if government is designed as a top-down mechanism, that's based on a fear structure. I mean, there's an innate fear built in government to suppress and control people. And, and, and under democratic structures, the theory is that people will somehow control uh, what goes on in government. We don't have, of course, a, a pure democracy. We have a republic, uh, if, if we can keep it, as Ben Franklin quipped. Um, but that means it's, it's, it's representative, allegedly. Um, and I say allegedly because uh, our, our, our current system, particularly in the United States, is hardly representative demographically, number one. Uh, number two, in something like the House of Representatives, there are so many people per representative, it, it cannot possibly hear that, hear the voices of, of all people. So that then pr is prone to interest groups um, to dominate, and the U.S. system is particularly dominated by money in a capitalist system. Um, so there's a lot of conflation between voices and money. You know, money is not free speech, but it gets conflated that way, particularly post-Citizens United. Um, but because of that kind of structure, I mean, the thing that's dangerous about the illusions of democratic structure is that people believe that they have a choice and a say, we can choose X or Y, we can have Democrat, Republican. Um, but it's all uh, controlled generally by, by PR firms and, and through media. Uh, we live in a country where we can have 500 kinds of toothpaste, but only two presidential candidates, right? So it's by design to create this illusion of participation because the fear is that if the people really do speak their mind and vote their interests, then you wouldn't have plutocratic control. Um, and while people that have studied this for years know that, uh, a couple years back, uh, both the study at uh, Princeton and Northwestern, both elite universities that pump out these plutocrats, um, did a study and they said that the United States is in fact not a democracy in any way. It's, a, it's literally a plutocracy, which means it's governed by the well-born. It's, it's governed by the wealthy. It's governed by money and, and the rich. And the, the, the democratic structures that are put forward are designed to keep out, quote unquote, say, the rabble. And that's not really a position any different than Alexander Hamilton's. Right? that the people are too stupid and ignorant to vote and they shouldn't vote. John Jay said the, the people that own the country ought to run it. Well, that's the kind of country that we have, and it shouldn't really be that surprising because that's how we started. Right? And so uh, Charles Beard in 1913 did a history, the, the more of a progressive look at the, uh, the economic history of the United States, where it went back and looked at the founders and who they were and what they did. And they, were, they all had economic interests. So the idea isn't really that the United States started as some kind of pure democracy and then descended uh, into something terrible, like not democratic. We were never democratic in the first place. In fact, we were probably far less democratic uh, at the founding than the United States is now. But I would say that the, the impetus behind that, that entire trajectory, even if it's towards some more participation, I'm arguing that the participation is largely an illusion because it doesn't necessarily net major changes that represent the voices of the masses of people in the first place. What's behind that? A fear of the multitude, a fear of self-governance. Why? Because there's a group of people that want to use democracy as a ruse so that they can maintain their own interests. Capital class, Wall Street banks, military industrial complex, security complex, big pharma. These are the things that tend to dominate and control government. And if you take a look at the policies implemented by our government, those are the interests that tend to be represented. What's behind that? I believe that there's fear behind that uh, because if people really did get a voice, I mean, you take a look at polls, you know, like a majority of Americans would like to have things like single payer and they want to raise minimum wage. Why is the Congress dragging their feet on all these things? Fear, control of the money class, right? So um, I think no matter what government you look at, there's fear as some element, some more than others. But in the United States today, I think we're a pretty fear adult culture. Um, and, and, and there are, again, some historic, I ran through a few historic reasons for that, but uh, I think that it's unfortunate. And I think that if people become more educated and aware of that kind of structure, and that they work to change the way that the system works and how the parties are controlled by capital, that that is one way to try to get out of that. But I think if you start on a global or grassroots level, I think that it's more tenable. I think that you're more likely to see those kind of results on a local level than a national level. And again, back to the Princeton Northwestern studies that say we're a plutocracy, that's also implied there. That on the national level, the studies claim that we had zero influence on, on policy. But on the local level, that's very different. You know? And I, again, I would argue that some local governments are also governed by, by fear. But if you can get people into local government that really are thrust from the populace, then fear doesn't have to be an element. You can rule, you can, you can not rule, you can uh, sort of govern and facilitate, right? And I think that that is what a more democratic culture looks like.